Welcome back to the second video in a three-part series reviewing how to use Google Forms to formatively assess foreign language learners and monitor student growth and progress with vocabulary. Today's video will review how to set up an automatic assessment grader and an introduction as to how the data from the assessments can be used moving forward. So let's get started. I'll begin with the assumption that you have a basic understanding of Google Forms and how to set up an assessment. If you aren't familiar, please check out the part one video linked in the description below, uh, and that will take you through how to set up Google Forms and formative assessments. Let's take a look at the vocabulary assessment I had my students complete. To do this, I'll start by going to the drive. You can also visit the drive by clicking on the Google Apps icon in the top right and going down to the drive. So I'll open up my 3.1 vocabulary assessment and we'll jump right into the live viewer so you can see what my students see when they take the assessment. First, you can see the title 3.1 vocabulary assessment. Below that, a student learning target. I can discuss what I and others eat and drink for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Automatically collect their email response, which they will type in here. Nombre, their first name, apellido, their last name, and then their class period. First name, the last name, and the class period make it a lot easier to sort the data afterwards and analyze by individual class period. I include directions to write the correct vocabulary word and give students the option to skip any questions if they don't know it. Then I leave special characters so students can actually copy these and paste these if needed when they're taking the assessment. Now for the actual assessment material. On this assessment, I set up 35 short answer questions that simply ask students to translate each of their vocabulary words from English to Spanish. This type of assessment makes student vocabulary growth very clear. So we'll take a look scrolling through. All of my questions are short answer questions. I provide students with the English definition and they are required to write the Spanish vocabulary word. Once they are done, they'll go all the way down and click submit. After creating the assessment, you as the teacher must actually take the assessment to create the answer key. So I'll start by inputting my name up at the top after my email address, senormoostpt at gmail.com. Now for my first name, I like to do something a little bit different. I like to put answer key. And for my last name, I fill in answer key as well. That makes it a lot easier at the end to easily recognize which submission is going to be used as my answer key. For class period, that doesn't really matter. I will just choose class period number one. Now, before you get started, it is essential that answers are 100% accurate and correct because this is the form that the computer will use to grade students' assessments. So give me a couple seconds. I'll go through and create my answer key. After you are done with the assessment, you have to click I'm not a robot. And then once you're sure that you have 100% accuracy with your answers, you can click submit. Awesome, your response has been recorded. Now we've already created the Google Form assessment, we've created our answer key, and now we have to have the students take the actual assessment. So you can post the assessment link on your website or share it to them via email. After you have all your students take the assessment, you can open up the spreadsheet that you linked to the original form that has all your student data in it. A reminder that you can locate that in your drive beneath your assessment, such as right here, or if you go to your assessment itself, at the top of your vocabulary assessment, you can click the responses tab and then click the green spreadsheet to go where your data is. Now look at this, we can see all my student responses. Up at the top, you can see mine is the first response labeled first name and last name as the answer key. And then I have all my students down beneath that. I have blurred out my student email addresses and names for privacy purposes. And then if you scroll over to the right, you can see what class period they have. Scrolling down, we'll see later in the day that later class periods took the assessment. These up at the top header, are all of your individual questions, my vocabulary words. And then down below, these are individual student responses for each of the questions. But we don't wanna simply look at our student responses. 
we want to set up an automatic grader to compare student answers with our answer key that we already generated. To set up the automatic grader, you first need to click the add-ons in the top toolbar and then click get add-ons. We are looking for an add-on called Fluberoo. Sometimes it will pop up within the main screen, Fluberoo right here, but if it doesn't, in the top right, you can search Fluberoo, F-L-U-B-A-R-O-O, -O. click enter to search, and then it should pop up right away. You start by clicking the plus free icon on the right-hand side. You then have to choose which Google account you want to associate it with. And then you have to give Fluberoo permission to access that Google account's drive and email privileges. This is okay, they won't take advantage of anything, uh, and they're just using that to get the students their responses. So click Allow at the bottom, and then you'll be welcome to Fluberoo. If you wanna go ahead and read the information message that they give you, or go to fluberoo.com, you can pause the video and go there now. After installing the plugin, you must enable Fluberoo in this sheet if it's not already enabled. In this sheet, it's already enabled, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sheet, just to show you what you will have to do in the future process. You'll start off, here's your new spreadsheet. You would typically have to go to Add-ons, Fluberoo, and then click Enable Fluberoo in this sheet. And then you're good to go. However, we'll close out of this sheet and go back to our old sheet. Once you have Fluberoo enabled, you need to click on Add-ons again, Fluberoo, and then Grade Assignment. First, you must identify whether or not you want Fluberoo to grade each question. Clearly, I don't want Fluberoo to grade the first four questions in my assessment. Those questions asking for students' email address, their first name, last name, and class period. That information is used to identify students. So on the left-hand side, if it isn't already chosen, you can click down and click Identify Students. The other options that it provides is skipping grading, which is very clear as to what it does, normal grading, which is what we're going to want for our later questions, and then grade by hand. Personally, I never use this as an option because if I'm going to grade something by hand, it is usually much more time consuming and difficult to provide meaningful feedback to students over the computer. So I still do these parts of an assessment such as extended responses on paper. So we've identified the first four questions as identifying the student, that is correct. Now we're moving on to the actual assessment questions. You have multiple options right now. You have first to assign the point value. Clearly, we want each question to be weighted equally, so we will leave all these point values at one. Fluberoo tries its best to automatically assume which questions you want to be normally graded and which ones you want to be skipped, but it isn't always 100% accurate. So you need to scroll down and make sure all your content questions are marked as normal grading and all the point values are marked at 1, or however you'd like to weight them. After you've double checked all your settings, you can click continue on the bottom right. Now you must choose which submission you want to choose as your answer key. The first one on the list should be the one that you originally submitted. As you can see, mine is Senior Moose TPT, answer key, answer key as my name. If you ever forget to take the assessment before you give it to your students, you can always go back, take the assessment, and then you'll have to look through your answer key within this list. So I'll make sure my answer key is selected, and I'll click continue in the bottom right. Right now, Fluberoo is going to work on the grading. Since Fluberoo is a scripting app, what it actually does is compares the characters in student responses to those in your answer key. Therefore, if there is something minutely different, even simple things such as spaces or periods, the student answer will be marked wrong. This is why it's essential that you provide an answer key that is 100% accurate and students understand that their answers must be 100% accurate to be marked correct. After grading is complete, you can close the box and the first thing you notice is at the bottom, Fluberoo created a separate tab for the grades. Notice, here are our original student submissions and then here are the grade tabs to the right. Now just so you can see a basic tour of the grade sheet. First and foremost, this is based off of data inputted on the student submissions tab, so make sure you aren't making any edits on this sheet. In the top left, it gives you a quick assessment summary. There are 35 points possible. 14.87 is our average points. 
There were 70 total submissions, and there were 26 questions marked as low-scoring questions. Those are questions that the average score was beneath a 60%. Now you can see the same data on the left-hand side that I'm blurring out, but my student email addresses, the first and last names, their period numbers. But then right here in the next column, it goes through the total points that they earned and their overall percentage on this assessment. Now to share the grades with the students. To do this, you need to click Add-ons at the top, Flubrew, and then Share Grades. Now the basic setup process, the email address question. Which question did you collect that had students input their email address? Usually it's going to be listed as email address, but notice it has all the options we previously labeled as identifying our students. Email address was one of our questions, so we'll click that. Now the grade sharing method. We have three options, whether we'd like to share it via email, via the Google Drive, or to share it via both. I personally think that email is sufficient. And then we have three more options below. Include a list of questions and scores. I do believe this is pretty much always necessary that students see the actual questions, whether they got it right or wrong, they need to look back at the original question. Now, this one is up to you, and that's whether to include an answer key or not. For this assessment, I'm going to include an answer key, but it is based on your personal preference and the actual assessment as to whether or not you're going to include an answer key. And then you have an optional message you can include down at the bottom. So I'll simply put, keep studying your vocabulary, and then you click continue on the bottom right. And you'll see a loading dial. That is loading as it is sending the email results back to your students. Depending on the number of responses you have, this can take 30 seconds all the way up to a couple minutes, so please be patient. You can close out to another window if you'd like. Fantastic. Fluber notification. 70 grades were successfully shared. So you can click OK. Now we're going to take a quick pause to preview what the email the students receive will look like. So I pulled up one of the email addresses that got a response. Notice they got an email from Fluburu Grader with the subject line saying, here is your grade for the 3.1 vocabulary assessment. You can click that and notice it immediately shows the kids their overall grade. They earned 25 out of 35, 71%. It gives my message, keep studying your vocabulary. It provides the email I gave them, the name, the class period, and then it does a nice job of color coding which questions I got correct and incorrect. Notice the red questions are marked incorrect and the green ones are marked correct. So just by a quick scan, it is very easy to tell how you did and call attention to the ones that we got wrong. Let's take a quick look at some of the ones we got wrong. The first one, el almuerzo, was the correct answer and we left that one blank. So clearly we got that wrong. The second one, the beverage, I put el bebido when clearly the correct answer is la bebida. So it was marked incorrect. La cena, we got correct. It is in green. Beneath that to share is compartir and I put compartir. So it was marked wrong, just one letter off. So we've seen the student data, we've seen the individual student results, but it's also crucial that we take a look at the spreadsheet to see what we can do better as teachers. If you take a look, if you scroll down to the bottom of the data, all the way down to the bottom of the submissions, Fluburu calculates what percentage of students answer the questions correctly, and then it automatically highlights this percentage if it is less than 60% of the students answering the question. You can use this data to determine which words are missed the most frequently, and then you can use this data to adapt your instruction in the classroom and which words or phrases you need to incorporate into daily conversations and lessons more frequently. For example, let's take a look at our data. The lunch, 48%, not terrible, but the beverage, the drink, only 18% of students answer this question correctly. I clearly need to incorporate that word more into our activities. The dinner, however, were up to 60%. Keep in mind my numbers are so low because this was a pre-assessment, this was early on. But scrolling through, oh, look at that, the cereal, 84%. Remember that it was el cereal. Moving even further down, the bread, el pan, 91%. I don't think that we need to include the bread in any more activities. However, the ham and cheese sandwich, 4% of students. When we have data like that, we can go back and look at the actual student submissions, 
and we could scroll down to the question that says the ham and cheese sandwich, and then we can do further analysis. Did the students not know the vocabulary word? Or, just as I suspected, students did not remember that an accent went on the A in sandwich and the O in hamon. Also, the spelling of hamon is atrocious. The final feature we will review in Fluberoo is Fluberoo's auto grade feature. What this will allow you to do is to post an assessment on your website, such as this vocabulary assessment, and then students can take it whenever they please, and as, as frequently as they please, and Fluberoo will automatically grade and send the results without you having to do anything in between. This feature is a huge benefit that allows students to progress monitor and be aware of their growth. To set up this feature, all you have to do is go into the add-ons, Fluberoo, Advanced, and then enable auto grade. Before enabling auto grade, would you like to update your grading and email settings? This is up to your personal preference. Since I already have my grading preferences set up, I would usually click no here, but just for you, I will click yes to show you what you're missing out on. It's the same grading setup we did earlier. So which questions identify students? These questions are all normal. Point values one, click continue. You have to choose your answer key. Mine's going to stay the same. Answer key, answer key, click continue. And then the final part, how do you wanna share the data with the students? Well, it's going to send it to their email address. I wanna share via email, include the list of questions, include an answer key, and then my little note to them at the bottom. Click continue. And you are ready to go with your auto grader. I hope this video provided a basic introduction to how to use Fluberoo to automatically grade formative assessments created on Google Forms. Our final video in the series will take an in-depth look at the data analysis process and how to use these assessments to monitor student growth. The final video will also provide an introduction to the student self-evaluation and SMART goal process.